Hey guys, welcome to this video. Today is going to be a quick one. I just wanted to share with you what I've done today, um, or well, today and yesterday. So I got this TV here. It's a Sony um, with a BX1S chassis. Um, and this particular model is a bare bones model. It has a dual mono input. It has composite and that's it. Nothing else. Um, so as you know with all the other TVs I'm first looking at whether I can RGB mod this and uh, it turns out that uh, Mac was led, uh, you know a trusted advisor had already gone through the the work of, of looking into that and, and checking that uh, whether it was a uh, moddable or not and this chip here is the actual jungle and microcomputer that's uh, got everything all in one and long story short, he wasn't able uh, to get it done. Uh, there are RGB inputs, but they are disabled uh, within the chip. And uh, so, yeah, so RGB mod is a no-go on this particular chassis. So I really like the picture on it. And, you know, I picked this TV up on a hard rubbish and I just felt bad dumping it. And so I thought oh, maybe we can improve it. So the uh higher end models of this particular chassis have you know stereo sound good uh, good speakers um <clears throat> component in and s video on this particular one i i was just interested in restoring s video so this is what i've done uh it worked and i just want to show you the process of doing that um it's not really a mod because you know the chassis is basically already kind of wired for it uh, it's just a matter of reading the schematics, uh, understanding how it's done. Uh, the hard bit is I couldn't find schematics of a TV that actually had it enabled. So as you'll see, I'll, I'll walk you through the schematics. There's a lot of values of component missing. But fortunately, I still have my hands, uh, I could, could get my hands on the higher end model that has a component and as video. And so I was able to just basically took high res pictures of the chassis and get some some of that missing information so i'll show you that and then i'll show you the results all right so here's the service manual for the the, the particular, particular tv that we got here so that's the one without the features however there is some traces of s video and other features that are not enabled on this particular TV. Um, now, like I said before, I was unable to find uh, a chassis of a TV that's fully populated. Uh, sorry, a service manual of a TV that's uh, fully populated. But let's have a look at what we got. So this is the TV. This is how it looks. It's it's fairly compact, which I like. It doesn't have any speakers on the side. It has a shitty mono speaker on one end, and that the other end is just dummy. Um, all right, let's scroll down and let's find the schematics. So we'll first look at the um, at the block diagram. And uh, as I said before, there are RGB inputs uh, here, um, but they are disabled uh, within the jungle itself. Um, and what we are going to to um, tap into is AV1 in. So there's already an AV1, it's already enabled, so there's nothing in the jungle that prevents us from doing as video. Uh, there's only one thing that we need to, to do to enable it, and I'll show you what it is. Because on these TVs, as video and composite share the same input, so they share the same set of stereo inputs, and on the TV you set AV1. That's the same thing. Uh, there's just uh, a detection process uh, to to know whether it's uh, we're using composite or S video. Cool. So now let's go to the actual chassis. Let's try to find a page that has the S video, and this is the one here. Okay. Let's zoom in. Okay. So when I saw that, I was like, okay, cool. Now we know what needs to be done. Unfortunately. Sony removed the values of the components that that are actually missing. Uh, so this is the S video uh, plug. We can see that Y is already wired. There's nothing to be done here. Um, all the the, um, 
the components here with a value under already populated. When you have a double X, that's where it's missing. So here on the chroma line, um, this is what we need to re-enable. Um, this here C1, uh, I've already checked. Um, you can believe me, it actually goes straight to the chip, to the uh, C input on the chip. So there's nothing uh, after this. So this particular resistor is already there. It's a 100 ohm resistor. And because that's the value, and I checked that on the chassis, is already there. So we're missing this termination resistor, this inline resistor, and this capacitor for the actual chroma line. Now, there's a bunch of components that we're missing here as well. And these as you can see, are connected to these two little dots. Well, this is an actual physical switch that um, basically shorts when you insert uh, S-Video plug. And when it's shorted, it tells the TV to switch to S-Video. It's as simple as that. So um, it's missing these components here. And, uh, you know, I tried to play a guessing game and what I actually did was pull out a um, schematics from a TV that does have S-Video. And I tried to do a comparison. So here's my notes. Um, so this is the extract of, of it. And so we can see that it terminates um, in to a 75 ohm resistor. It's got 22, uh, so 220 ohm resistor in line and 001. So that was a good guesswork, I guess. But like I said before, it turns out I have a TV, uh, access to a TV that has the same chassis, but has as video enabled. So I just took a uh, high resolution picture of that, which is here. And I was able to inspect and find the actual values on there. For instance, um, where was it? 944 here reads uh, 152, which is 1.5 kilo ohms. Um, anyway, you get the you get the principle. Um, I was able to fill in the blanks and confirm which values. So the other thing that I found is that these two points here, uh, which looks like uh, they they look like anchor points uh, and ground usually ground points they're not they actually these two points represent the switch so this is actual ground and this is floating um and when these two are connected it tells the tv to switch to as video uh this here is chroma this here is luma um i'll just show you how i got around to wiring everything on my chassis okay so here's the actual chassis um unfortunately i had to kind of do a rough job because I didn't have the proper comp components. I didn't have um, corresponding SMD resistors and capacitor. The worst of all is this particular 103, so 0 0.01 uh, microfarad. Um, this should be a very small SMD cap here, but I had this massive one. That's the only one I could find, unfortunately. And I have a hunch that this is actually causing interference because the leg here is hovering. It's about two centimeters and yeah. Anyway, so um, here I wired the switch between these two points. I'm thinking of actually hard wiring up. Oh, you can't see that on camera. Sorry. Oh, you could see. Yeah, it's just there. Yeah. So these two points, uh, I think I'm just going to hardwire them because there's a composite input at the front and, you know, why would you use composite anyway? So the back could be hardwired as video and the front could be uh, composite. The 75 ohm um, terminating resistor is here. I did have one um, SMD resistor. I think this was the, the 220. I found that one, so I just put it uh, at its place. That was okay and the capacitor here. Um, this was on the detection line um, and the second missing resistor was actually a zero ohm resistor so just put a, a bit of a leg, um, a piece of a, a resistor leg and uh, jumped this particular bit there. And that's all, that's all we needed to put. Uh, now I'm just gonna show you the result. Well, 
my test rig is here just put a bit of wire and a female connector and I wired a switch temporarily and it does work but like I mentioned before I got interference so I'd like to revisit a little bit the um, this capacitor there and find a SMD capacitor to get it done properly and there we go um, so as you can see we got the OSD on here that confirms this is as video I'll show you what happens if I uh, depress the switch we only have half of uh, the signal and it's detected as video um, yeah and now we got as video so um, sorry for the poor quality on the camera this camera doesn't have a shutter speed setting but this is just plain all as video I just wanted to share that with you um, main major part of the work was to analyze the, the schematics and just dig some information and do some research uh, implementing the the missing components took you know 15 minutes so yeah I guess uh, if you have a TV that uh, especially a Sony uh, or big brand that doesn't have um, the input that you're looking for um, you know ha have a have a look at the uh, the other models that share the same chassis because there could be, you know, dead features there that uh, you can restore, dead or unused features that, that you can restore with a bit of, a bit of research. So, hope uh, you enjoy this and thanks for watching. See you guys.